Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to Volume 3 in our series on the cycle of fifths for the alto and baritone saxophones. Today we're going to complete the cycle from the 8 o'clock position on the analogue clock right back up to the midnight position, which of course is C major that we started on. We'll be dealing only with major keys today that have flats in them. If you recall in the Volume 2 session, the last scale we got to was the scale of C sharp major. Now C sharp major has seven sharps in it. Every one of the alphabet letters in the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, became a sharp. Hence, there are no more notes to sharpen. So when we look at the fifth note in the preceding key, so C sharp major, that would have been, if you think of it, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp. G sharp was the fifth note in the last scale we played in the cycle. But we have to call it now by its enharmonic equivalent. In other words, on the saxophone, that fingering can be called G sharp, but it is also the note A flat. And the key in music today that we're dealing with is the key of A flat major. There is no key called G sharp major. So just be clear on that. And I will do another tutorial so that you can understand the concept of the enharmonic major keys. Now, as per our prior sessions in Volume 1 and 2, I'm a huge believer that if you can say it, you can play it. So I recommend you put your metronome on at 70 beats a minute. And as crotchets, that's one note per beat at that speed, I want you to say with me the notes in an A-flat major scale. A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, G, F, E flat, D flat, C, B flat, A flat. Now, if you're new to the key of A flat major, you may have to put in some time to memorize those notes. I've put the notes on the screen for you. However, the real test is not to just read those notes off the screen as you say them with me. The real test is that you can say without any notes on any screen the notes that are in any of the major keys that you're trying to play and also in the order that you're going to play them in the scale. Now again as per the prior volumes I'll put the metronome on at 70 beats a minute and your task is to play as quavers that is half beat notes like, like this speed here 1 and 2 and 3 and that speed we're now going to play together the scale of A flat major. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> How did you go? Were you able to comfortably play that scale with me without any mistakes at the speed of 70 beats a minute as quavers? If not, just pause the video, put in whatever time you need to be able to say it before you play it, and whatever time you need to perfect the fingerings for that scale. Now remember, there are a number of ways to play B flat on a saxophone, on all of the saxophone family. I strongly recommend that you use the little tiny key here, the BIS key, B-I-S key, in combination with the standard B natural key. Use your index finger across both of those keys at the same time. That's the default way to play B flat on any of the saxophones. The only time we don't use that fingering is in keys where B flat or its enharmonic equivalent A sharp is either preceded by or followed by the note B natural. In those cases, we would use the traditional A-sharp fingering to produce the pitch of B-flat. Okay, moving on, the next key that we run into has to be the fifth note of the A-flat scale. And if we've got to call it a sharp or flat, we need to call it a flat because we're now not in the sharp keys. We've exhausted all of the major keys that have sharps in it. So if there's any doubt in your mind and you're tempted to call the note a sharp, no, you'll need to call it a flat. So the fifth note in the A flat scale that we've just played was A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat. E flat is the fifth note in an A flat scale. It's also the next 
major key as we come back up the clock now and we're in the nine o'clock position on the analog clock now and we're dealing with the key that has three flats. So we're actually coming back up to C major that has no sharps or flats at all. So each new key as we come up around the circle will have one less flat in it than the prior one. So if you recall the key of A flat major had the key, the flats in the key of B flat, E flat, A flat and D flat. We simply drop that last flat, D flat, we get rid of it. So the key of E flat major has B flat, E flat and A flat in it. So keep in mind those three flats. Again, let's say it, if we can say it, we can play it. So I want you to say with me the notes of an E flat major scale. Two, three, four. E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, D, C, B flat, A flat, G, F, E flat. Again, if that's a struggle for you to keep up with that speed at 70 beats a minute, stop the tutorial and put in whatever time is required going over those notes in the E flat scale until they are second nature to you. It has to be as simple as 2 plus 2 equals. Hopefully your mind was just screaming out 4. 2 plus 2 equals 4. It always has and it always will. The notes in an E flat major scale are what we just said a minute ago. They have been since the beginning of music theory and they will be. That's one of the fantastic things about the music language. Whilst music continues to evolve, the fundamentals of music have not changed in centuries. I'm going to play that E flat scale in the higher register just so that we balance out between low and high as we play through this cycle. But you can play it in the low register if you're not comfortable playing up to E flat above high C. As quavers, one, two, three, how did you go? If you need to practice that, put in the time away from this tutorial with your metronome, sort your fingerings out. If you've got any doubts as to the fingering, check out my how to play the low notes and how to play the high note videos. I take you through every fingering on the saxophone in those tutorials. OK, we now move to the 10 o'clock position on the analog clock. We're getting up closer towards that starting point. This time we will have to play the key that has two flats in it. Remember, as we come back up around that clock, over here, when we started at the one o'clock position through to seven, we added an extra sharp on our journey in clockwise motion around that cycle. But when we get to the flats, we're actually taking away a flat each time. So in many respects, it's a bit easier. If you know the four flats of A flat major, which we've just learned in this tutorial, we just get rid of one flat each time we go up a next position on the clock. So the 10 o'clock position will only have two flats in it. We get rid of the third flat that we had a minute ago. We had B flat, E flat, A flat. We don't use the A flat. We just have B flat and E flat in this key. And the fifth note in the E flat scale that we played was E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat. So the name of this key, the key that has two flats in it, the major key, is B flat major. So let's say the notes of a B-flat major scale together at 70 beats a minute. Two, three, four. B-flat, C, D, E-flat, F, G, A, B-flat, A, G, F, E-flat, D, C, B-flat. If you're comfortable with that, move on now to trying to play that scale on the saxophone. Now, there are two possible octaves to play a B flat scale on on any of the saxophones. B flat is the lowest note on all of the saxophones, with the exception of the modern day baritone saxophones, which go down to low A. But we're going to play the B flat scale today in the higher of the two octaves. That's the easier of the two octaves to play it in. And I'll get you to play that along with me now. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, fine.
finally, at the 11 o'clock position on the analog clock, we have to deal with the key that starts on the fifth note of the scale we just played. So B flat C, D, E flat, F. F is the key in the 11 o'clock position on the cycle. F major is the key that has one flat in it, B flat. Remembering that for all of these scales, we're playing B flat with our index finger only on the left hand. Let's say the notes of an F major scale together. Two, three, four. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. Again, getting easier. F is the easiest of the major keys that have flats in it. It only has one flat. Let's try and play the F major scale. Again, we can play this in two octaves. I'm going to play it in the lower of the two octaves today, and I recommend that's where you start as you work on these scales. Two, three, four. <laughs> Congratulations if you've stuck with me right through to this journey of getting back up to 11 o'clock on the analog clock. You've played every one of the 12 possible major scales in music and you've been able to say them at 70 beats a minute and play them as quavers at 70 beats a minute. So moving your fingers at 140 beats a minute. That's a fantastic starting place to delve into what I call learning to play in the key of life. Just like when we speak to each other in a conversation, we're not worried about what pitch of the notes that we're going to say our words with. We just speak. And each of us, our voice print is every bit as unique as our fingerprint. That's why if you listen to a recording of Charlie Parker, say done in the 1940s or 50s, and a recording by Dave Sanborn, recorded in 2017, you can instantly pick up, if you are aware of the works of both of those artists, the styles, Charlie Parker and the sound, versus David Sanborn, without anyone telling you which player is which, you can instantly identify them just as easy as if you saw a photograph of those two great players. When a friend calls you on the phone, even if they don't announce who they are, you are automatically aware who you're talking to by their voice print. In music, we need to develop a sound and we need to not let any of those barriers that the key signatures can create for some people get in the way of our freedom of having a conversation in the key of life. Keep your eye out for some further tutorials where I'll take the cycle of fifths into a more musical setting and challenge you to be able to start playing some tunes in all of those keys. For the moment, I'm going to end this tutorial with a play along track, the same as in volume one and two. I'll put on a four piece backing band for you playing two bars at 70 beats a minute in each of the four keys that we've done in our volume three session today. So the keys of A flat, E flat, B flat, and F. And you can practice your skills with this quartet and just make sure that you really can firstly play the scales non-stop and keep up with the backing band. Hope you've enjoyed the journey of the cycle of fifths. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, keep in touch via my website and look for some follow-up tutorials that will take these concepts further into a musical realm for you. For the moment, bye for now.